so today's webinar is um, we have uh, we're delighted to have Evelyn Cusack um, and it's going to be on how the weather on our inland lakes is forecast and the importance of knowing the weather for angling safety. Um, Evelyn Cusack is head of the forecasting division in Met Aaron. Uh, she's joined Met Aaron as a trainee forecaster in 1981 after studying physics and maths in UCD and hasn't changed her career yet. Uh, Evelyn will talk to us about how and why National Meteorological Services now name storms and will explain the yellow, orange, red warning codes. Also, as part of the Be Summer Ready, Ready Safety on the Water campaign, Met Aaron has introduced new forecasting services for Irish coastal waters and inland, inland lakes, including a new three-day small craft and gale warning. Evelyn uh, was, will also be delighted to answer any questions where possible. And um, I'm just going to hand over to Evelyn um, and let her share her, her screen for you. Evelyn, welcome. You're on mute. You're on mute there. That's yeah. a great start. Thanks, Aideen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you very much to uh, Inland Fisheries. Is that right? Yes. Uh, Inland Fisheries Ireland for inviting me. It's a great pleasure and a very opportune time because Met Aaron just over the last few months have launched some new products for our fishing folk and also for our mariners. So um, if I have time at the end, I'll actually go on our website and show you a few of those features. I have a few of them in stills anyway. And I think um, uh, Inland Fisheries will share my slides with you anyway. You're very welcome. So I'm going to um, start share now. So I hope you're all enjoying the fine weather, although there's a bit of a change today and the weather is, I'm afraid, turning colder again for the rest of the week. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so I hope you got a chance to enjoy the fine weather. So uh, let's start. Met Aaron, I'll just move this out of here. So Met Aaron, I just want to check the time here. Okay. So Metairn is a division of the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage. And I mean, you might wonder what why are we with the Department of Housing, but it's more so that we're associated with uh, the Custom House. This is our parent uh, building, if you like, and that was originally the Department of Communications. Uh, and so we, we sort of stayed with that, more the house rather. The, yeah, as you know, with each change of government, there's a ch slight change in, in um, uh, what constitutes... Uh, the departments. But um, in the Department of Housing, we also have the NDFEM, which is the National Director for Fire and Emergency, and that's Sean Hogan, and also the local authorities. So, so we do have a strong link within this department anyway. So that's the Custom House, but our own building is this rather striking truncated pyramid, and that's in Glasnevin Hill. And um, let me just see a pointer option. Yeah, a laser pointer. So the forecast, uh, there's satellite and radar, our satellite receivers here. The forecast office is actually on the very top floor here, but uh, we're actually getting it renovated and the forecast office is being divided into two to accommodate a new flood forecasting division, which was just started in uh, 2015. So the renovations are very, very slow, but we hope actually to move in later on in the week. Hopefully work will start again soon after the COVID restrictions. Um, so we're quite a small organisation, but the blue dots here are 500 rainfall stations. And we're very grateful to these because these are manned or personed by voluntary observers. We do have uh, 80 automatic climate stations, 25 automatic uh, synoptic stations that'd be like high quality stations and we only have uh, met observers left now human observers at Dublin airport Co uh, uh, casement Cork Shannon and Knock airport um so it, it was a great job to get a job as an observer years ago in Met Aaron, but uh, it's mostly automatic at this stage um now uh Aileen mentioned that 
uh, we're just really part of the Be Summer Ready launch, which was uh, last Wednesday on the 22nd of April. And Metairn, we're very proud to be uh, working with the Coast Guard and Water Safety Ireland. And you've probably all seen the leaflet, but I just want to point out the Metairn part of it, uh, which is weather and warnings. And you're probably aware that we issue small craft warnings. That's for Beaufort for six or seven winds. Now, this is a uh, 10... Uh, 10 nautical miles offshore. So you might say, well, that has not, nothing got to do with lakes. So I'll talk a little bit about that anyway. But if you're, if you're heading out on your lake or whatever, and you hear that we do have a small craft warning in operation, check the coastline, because if, if you are getting near that coast, it will mean quite blustery conditions over land as well, and indeed over lakes. And the bigger the lake, depending on exposure, the stronger the winds. So you can get funneling anyway. So if it's small, if it's for six or seven at sea, it may well be in part of the lake as well, uh, particularly due to some funneling effects. But down here it says Meta and App, sign up for land and marine warnings notifications on your smartphone. So this is just a fairly new feature, um, marine warnings. Again, this was launched last week on the 22nd of April. And uh, there's been a few little teething problems and, but we are from now on issuing small craft warnings up to three days ahead and indeed weather warnings up to three days ahead. Generally, generally it was about 24 hours. So I'll just show you, um, sorry, I'll move that out of the way here. I'll just show you up to last week, uh, this was our warning uh, page on our website. Actually, last summer we um, we introduced three tabs, which is warnings for today, tomorrow, and the day after. And then just last week, if you keep an eye in Ireland here, we are now issuing warnings for the coastal waters in the three tabs. So up to now, we had the CRE just for 24 hours. So now you click on each individual tab, and you can get the warning associated. Now again, this is for marine, but. Um, for you guys, I would suggest that you do sign up for marine notifications on your smartphones because it'll give you a heads up. Yeah, like you probably follow the weather forecast anyway, but this will give you a, head, a heads up. So if there's a small craft warning out for down here and you're going out to lakes uh, close by in County Kerry or County Cork, then if it's a gusty situation or whatever, you're more than likely will get uh, winds up to four, six or seven locally in some parts of the lakes anyway. So um, as I said, do join up for the notifications on your smartphone and that will give you a heads up up to three days ahead. So that's a new feature. Also another new feature, if you go into our marine section, you can see here lakes in Ireland, a seven day forecast. I'll show you that in a moment, but Ireland wind barbs, now, wind barb is, is, if you like, a professional look rather than silly little arrows. And you can go into, if you go into our information section, so, sometime now, later this afternoon, it's raining outside, you won't be out sunbathing. So if you just go into our website and explore it. But uh, basically, a line there shows which way the wind is coming from. So uh, this is the forecast for next Sunday. And it's for very... A light variable, when you hear light variable, it means the direction is all over the place um, because the winds are so light. So we'll, we'll pick this particular uh, wind, this line here. There's nothing on that. So that actually is less than five knots. It's almost calm. Say, to pick this particular one that I'm pointing here. That's a five knots. Um, out here, it's a full line. It's 10 knots. Um, so you can learn how to read these. These are called uh, wind barbs. And this map is really good because there's three zoom levels. So you can zoom right into the area you're going and you get a forecast uh, precisely for the next week. Now I've seen here, this is a new feature as well, lakes in Ireland. So you go to the lakes in Ireland and you can put in a lake there and you'll get a forecast for a week ahead. Now, as I said, if we've time at the end, I'll actually go on the live site just to show you. I just took a few screen grabs in case the internet didn't work or something. So um, we give a generalized forecast for 24 hours in text form for a couple of the lakes, Loch Derg, et cetera, which you can get um, 
really we've got dozens of lakes here in this drop down menu and you can get an hour by hour forecast for that lake now um, if there's any lake that you need and isn't in the drop down list just drop me an email i'll give you my email at the end and we'll we'll add it in in a minute there's no problem there so our forecast really um where METERN is moving and all national forecast services is to enhance support for impact-based decision-making for weather events. Now, what that means in English is that it's all very well me telling you winds are going to be 20 kilometers per hour or whatever, but you want to know what does that mean on the ground? So obviously um, for the high impact events, this was actually, I took this picture, this was at the plowing championships and we had yellow warnings out first for winds of 100 kilometers per hour. Um, now we opted to orange for, uh, because of the impact it could have. I and mean, certainly there was widespread damage and destruction at the plant. It was basically a giant tented town. And uh, thankfully because of the uh, reasonably accurate forecast, it was closed down uh, as the wind, I was down on site with the organizers. It was calm at 6 a.m. Um, when when all the exhibitors and that start arriving, but the storm actually had whipped up by 7.30 a.m. So, and it was very bad for a couple of hours. So really our job now in Met Aaron, uh, we issue yellow, orange and red warnings, depending largely on criteria. So we might have winds there, for example, 50 to 65 kilometers per hour. That's mean winds and gusts between 90 and 110. But we're trying to relate these actual numbers to actual damage. Uh, for example, it's always going to be very hard to uh, forecast if a particular tree is going to uproot. Uh, particularly, um, say you, you might have a bad wind one day and nothing happens. And then if a week later, there might be a slightly lesser strong wind, but because the tree has been weakened, that, that yellow wind, if you want to call it that, might uproot that, uproot that particular tree, whereas there could have been orange level winds the week before. So forecasts will never, for example, be able to tell you which tree will be uprooted, but local authorities and county councils and indeed yourselves will have local knowledge. And hopefully, as our forecasts continue to get more accurate and timely and warnings get more timely and accurate, that it will allow you um, make decisions. Now, um, you may obviously, you know about storm naming, but that, that has really only started in Met Aaron since 2015. And we actually have only had one storm this season, Storm Aiden, which occurred at Halloween. The others didn't affect Ireland. In fact, Storm Christoph wasn't really a storm in terms of wind. It gave very heavy rain, torrential rain in England. And Storm Darcy gave very heavy blizzard, snowy conditions in Holland. We're in uh, a storm naming group with uh, the UK Met Office and the Dutch Met Service. So our uh, Imelda there is going to play. This is a video of uh, the lake conditions uh, during Storm Aiden in Halloween. So you can, I have to stop sharing now. And Imelda's going to play that, I hope. <laughs> a higher level of yellow but uh, as you've probably all experienced yourselves I mean it's been very rough in lakes as uh, sometimes now that we might have a wind warning out and we might say oh my you might have a thing uh to the edge of the year and say oh she's just fly and they're talking about that around the corner is the funneling effect is very strong so I think it's just well aware yourself and local funneling and indeed local shelter. So that's why the warnings are for the general area across a particular county and obviously uh, won't pick in um, all details. Okay, start sharing again. Okay. Press 
Sure. So um, for that particular storm there, as I said, we had yellow level warnings out, but you can see the effects they produce. So certainly never discount yellow level ra rainfall or wind warnings. Um, now my slides. Oh, yeah. The reason we name storms is uh, because it has been proven based on um, storms in the Caribbean and hurricanes going back hundreds of years that by giving a storm a name, it provides reach, engagement and influence for warnings. Let's check the time. And when a Met service, a national Met service such as Met Erin or the UK Met Office or Meteo France names the storm, it has the authoritative voice of the National Met Service. And I'll give you the criteria for naming storms in a minute. It hugely affects communication and it has fostered collaboration with adjoining National Met Services. So if the foreca Chief Forecaster now met Aaron, looks at all the charts, et cetera, et cetera, and thinks, oh, mm, that looks very like storm tomorrow. We then will collaborate with our chief forecaster colleagues in Meteo France or in the UK Met Office and discuss it. So um, this never happened before, certainly not in my time. So certainly before 2015, that never happened. So, and it's very useful post event for reference. We all remember when storm Ophelia was. Now we only, the 16th of October 2017, by the way. Now, we only name storms for very large depressions, and it's based on warnings that we saw there, orange, or as our colleagues in UK call it, amber warnings. So we won't uh, name a storm unless a Met Aaron expects orange level warnings across a number of counties. We don't name a storm now if we just expect winds up to orange level along the coast. Um, and we keep... The NHS, that's the National Hurricane Centre. So we need we keep the name of the storm if the National Hurricane Centre has named it. So going back in time, Hurricane Charlie. Charlie was an ex-hurricane that travelled across the Atlantic, Ophelia and Lorenzo. They weren't from the Metairn storm naming lists, if you like. So it does provide great uh, reach and interest in the public and obviously in the media. And this is our social media, our Facebook hits, if you like, um, for last uh, 2019, 2020. And you can see the enormous uh, number of hits coinciding with the actual storm name. So it really has been shown to work that the public are actually engaged and get to hear about it because of the actual name. And of course, our social media warnings and our website warnings are augmented by our lovely forecasters who appear on television, especially after the national, uh, the nine o'clock news. I mean, Metair are very lucky that RT keep us, you know, uh, giving the forecast after the nine o'clock news because it gets huge reach and influence there. Now, this is a satellite image of Ireland. A satellite is basically like a giant camera in the sky and the white stuff here is the cloud and you can see why Africa, while the Sahara is a desert because all the cloud bypasses it and Ireland is affected by the jet stream which feeds in these uh, bands of rain and these storm centres in from the Atlantic and this is a typical very intense Atlantic storm which is a, a result of cold polar air clashing with warm humid air and the clash zone is called a front, you've all heard of a weather front and it was named by Wilhelm Björkner, uh, a meteorologist in Denmark in the early 1900s, he likened it to the western front in the First World War so if you like two armies of, of cold air and warm air. Now you've often heard our forecast rain clearing to showers. So rain is the frontal rain, which in fact is the gray cloudy skies with mist and fog and drizzle and very poor visibility. And if you're expecting a front, if we're expecting a front, I really would advise you not to go out fishing or not to go out because the skies will close in and the winds will whip up and you can often get very squally winds after the front clears and you get these uh, shower clouds. This is called a cumulonimbus cloud, which can produce thunderstorms. Um, you know, from the Simpsons, you have the little cumulus cloud, but when they get very uh, high up in the air, you get cumulonimbus. And in fact, cumulonimbus clouds can produce thunderstorms and lightning, which in fact can kill you. 
obviously, compared to rain clouds, which are stratus, layer cloud, and just give you very boring, dull, cloudy, drizzly, rainy, miserable type days. Whereas the uh, showery uh, setup, you'll get beautiful sunshine, but then suddenly the shower will descend and be very squally. So really, it's very dangerous to go out in a lake or, or going out fishing when we're expecting a very unstable, very showery setup. You don't mind the odd passing shower, you can take shelter. But if there's any hint of thunderstorms, obviously the lightning can travel across water. It can hit a nearby boat or it can travel into a fishing rod. You don't need me to tell you that. So it can be very, very dangerous indeed. So I would advise maybe following the forecast and to get to know, to recognise the two different types of air masses, really. The difference between frontal cloud and, and shower cloud, that's very important, which you can see on our weather map. So that's a little bit of meteorology for you there. So I think I'm nearly finished now. Oh yeah, and the latest obviously is be very careful of sunburn. Unfortunately, Ireland has one of the highest uh, cancer incidences in the world, believe it or not, uh, skin cancer. We're not really, we, we think just because it's kind of cloudy, obviously it's raining today, you don't get sunburn in rain, but you can get burnt in cloud or skin damage in cloud. And certainly with those sunshine and showers episodes, you can actually burn in about 20 minutes. The high peak sunburn time in the high summer in July and August, June, July and August is 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Around this time of year, April, it's uh, sort of 12, or one o'clock. High noon in Ireland it's about 20 past one actually. So I think that's it. Sorry I've lost my screen sharing there. I think we're okay Aideen if we want to Perfect. Th th thanks very much, uh, Evelyn. That was really, really interesting and very informative. Um, nice explanation of the clouds as yeah. well. Um, and uh, some wonderful resources available in the MetAaron app and website for anglers now. I see that's constantly being added to, I see. So it's great. Um, I think we have a f might have one or two questions uh, from, and if people have any more questions, do put them in. Evelyn's delighted to answer any. Um, so I was going to hand over to my colleagues, Imelda and Rory. They've been busy in the background collat collating questions. Hi, Evelyn. Yes, one question in here from a participant, and you've actually already answered this, but uh, they pointed out that one of Ireland's premier brown trout lakes is Loch Sheelan, and they'd like that included in the lake forecast. Okay, um, can I, it, it would it be okay just to call up the website? I won't be a second. Yeah, no would problem. Right? Um, wait now, I just want to share again. Sorry, I'm not great at this, even though I'm at it for a full year, but there you go. <laughs> uh, share. So let me just check now. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a very dangerous thing going live here. <laughs> So uh, let's see, Loch Sheelan. Oh, so I hope to God it's here. If not, I'll get it in immediately. L M N. Here we are. Whew. <laughs> so there's Loch Sheelan. Um, so we're we're not we're not we can't issue text forecasts for all the lakes. So we've we've gone one better, and we are doing seven day forecasts for us all the lakes in Ireland. As I said. Uh, just send me in. So there's Loch Sheelan. Do you see the way you, you put it in there? Let me go through this again because this is a new and I think it's really good. So lakes in Ireland, you see here marine, go to lakes in Ireland. So these are the ones, Loch Derg, that we've been doing for donkey's years, Loch Ray. So they're just indicative and they're for just 24 hours ahead, okay? But we have this new thing, a drop down menu and we've put in all these lakes but Send me on more if, if it's not there. So where's Sheelan again? Let's do it again. So I just want to go through one second with this. It's really good. I hope you think it is anyway. <laughs> so there's Loch Sheelan. So there's today, Tuesday the 27th and 1400. So this is an hour by hour forecast. So there's the... Uh... Sorry, I just want to try and get my red pointer back. I can't. It only works for PowerPoint. So there's an hour by hour, the weather. Uh, the temperature 11 and the wind. So that's the direction there. So that's north, northeast, look. So at 1800, 
north northeast and the 20 is 20 kilometers per hour. Now we're actually going to improve this uh, during the summer and we're going to, for some reason, we didn't have gusts in, so we're going to add in gusts. So if you move along then, look, so there's Wednesday starting at midnight. Now, hopefully nobody's out in Loch Shielan at midnight, but uh, say tomorrow, oh my goodness, look, sunny weather tomorrow, yay, but still quite cool. It's only 10 degrees and that's because the wind is coming in from the northeast. Now that's quite strong, I think, for a lake, look, 25 kilometres per hour, 26 kilometres per hour. So that's hour by hour and it's hour by hour for Thursday, look, Thursday, Friday, it's hour by hour as well, Friday. And then Saturday, uh, it's every three hours. Sunday, every three hours. And Monday, every three hours. So that's a new feature. So that's good. So I'm not saying it's 100% perfect, but this is the best forecast in the world you'll get because it's been designed especially for our. Now, obviously, it's one point in a lake. So I'll just stop sharing now, if that's all right. Um, you know, in, in even in a small lake, there can be local effects. So you know all this anyway, you don't need me to tell you. You know, you can be standing there in one part and it's very sheltered and then just you move to another area and you could actually get a gale. So that's all. So what Metairn tried to do is that we for, we probably forecast the prevailing um, gradient of the wind. So we would give the strongest, hopefully, because you need to know the strongest. It's not the precautionary principle, it's kind of what's open, if you like, an open season. All right. That's great. Thanks, Evelyn. I have a, another question in here. Um, what is the rate of thunderstorm occurrence in Ireland and how did it change over the last 20 years? I have lived in the Netherlands and many years ago, thunderstorms were more heavy and frequent. You're on mute, Evelyn. Um, so I, I started, I just saw there a forecaster in 1982. Now I can hardly remember last week, so I can't pretend to remember every, every, every day. But I just, I remember saying, say about 15 years ago, gosh, there seems to be an awful lot more thunderstorms than we used to have. And like, and then I realised it's because we've better radars and we, we knew about them. Because when I started off in the early 80s, believe it or not, there was the weather radar in Dublin Airport. The, the officer there had to, I mean, this is embarrassing. He had to send the image of the radar by, uh, it, not, it wasn't even fax, like fax was fancy. I remember when fax came in, it was a kind of electro fax. So it came in slowly on a big drum. So it would take half an hour before we actually got the radar image. Um, so the reason we actually, we actually know about thunderstorms, number one, we can actually see them on the radar and we actually get what are called spherics. Again, look, I won't go back to the website, but you can actually see them. Uh, when we just end up, I'll just pop up the radar to show you. But we are actually marking in now on the Metair and radar a plus. There's a plus sign on the radar and that can pinpoint the thunderstorm. Now it can't, that doesn't predict it. That shows where it is. And, you know, in five, it's five minutes old, that image. So in terms of the Netherlands, I'd actually, if I was asked to say, um, you see, we don't have as much statistics on thunderstorms because we would have had to have an observer sitting underneath a thunderstorm. Do you know what I mean? Whereas we only had our 15 stations, Boar, Malin Head. Now, all those are no longer even manned, or I should say personed, but we do get the rainfall amount from all the 500 rainfall stations. But we are picking up the thunderstorms now much better with the radar. So it's very hard to compare 50 years ago or 30 years ago because we didn't have the radar to pick up the thunderstorms. We were just relying on people's reports. And even now, but as soon as there's a thunderstorm in the Midlands, I mean, Matt Aaron here, we all hear about it immediately because of Twitter, it's brilliant. You know, it really is good. So uh, the answer that they've become less frequent, I actually would have thought they have become more intense because of slight global heating. And that, that causes more evaporation. And thunderstorms are as a result of um, convection, the ground heating up and the water evaporating and going up into those big cumulonimbus. So um, 
look if they if they want to send me their email i can send them some real stats on it but you know certainly I, I, my perception as a forecaster is that it's we've gotten more but i think we're certainly forecasting them more because we know about them better just to finish on that we're now forecasting more hail um not that we're forecasting more hail we're emphasizing hail because tii transport infrastructure ireland Sorry, John. John Blackburn. Um, uh, there's been quite a few accidents on the motorways because of hail and, in fact, unfortunately, fatalities. And that's coming. If you go back to my slide with the Teletubbies and the cumulonimbus clouds, you get hail showers from cumulonimbus clouds, the showers. You don't get it from the rain. Um, and generally, when you've hail, you get lightning. Very, very dangerous to be at sea, at land, or on the beach when there's lightning around, and of course for the golfers as well. Okay, Rory, is that all right? That's great. Thanks, Evelyn. Another question now, in Evelyn. Um, I know you mentioned it's going to get colder as the week goes on. We have a particular request in from Ardara in County Donegal, and I'd like to know what's the weather for there for the next week. Uh, well, beautiful uh, Donegal, but you have that northerly wind. <laughs> So, um, you know, uh, I'm afraid you're going to get those showers and you could get some hail showers. So um, we'll just give me three minutes before we actually end up and we'll go on the website and get the actual precise forecast, hopefully. <laughs> I have another one here, Evelyn, for you. Um, thank you very much for the great presentation and the app is a great addition. Um, you might not be able to answer this, but why is there so much difference between other weather apps such as XP or AccuWeather? Is it just that they don't update in real time? Um, well, look, again, going back in my long career, I mean, to have a weather app, it's amazing. So they're all, they're all, they're all amazing. But Matera, I, I didn't go into modelling, maybe some, some other time, um, you know, you invite me back next year, whatever. Um, the Metairn is a very small organisation, so we're part of an international community, the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. Um, so there's 27 countries and we pool all our resources and we get this supercomputer, which is a global model, and that's where we get our 10 day forecast. You can now go on the Metairn website and get those charts for 10 days ahead. But each country then has localized forecasts, they're called high resolution models. So we run ours for Ireland, obviously. The global model, we, the weather is calculated every nine kilometers, but then the high resolution models, Met Aaron's one, the UK Met Office one, the Met France one for France, Ireland's for Ireland, ours high resolution model calculates the, the weather every two and a half kilometers, okay? So that's where the money is, but it's very, very expensive. So we only go, uh, 54 hours ahead. That's why we have the three day warning now. It's for just up to maximum, you know, three days. So we're calculating the weather every two and a half kilometers. So if you look at the weather app, say AccuWeather, which is an amazing app, but it doesn't have the high resolution for Ireland. So it's brilliant graphics and everything, uh, huge resources. So we're sort of a small organization, but we have to have the best weather forecast for Ireland, otherwise why do we exist? So I'm, I'm sticking with that anyway. And our modelers, like we hire our modeling section, we've all these great fellas and girls, PhDs in maths and physics, who have taken on loads in the last few years, and they're working at reducing our modeling. So sub kilometer level. So have I made that clear? So the big global apps, calculate the weather for the globe, whereas the Met Aaron one zooms in closer. And that's why, remember I showed you hour by hour, that was only for the high resolution Met Aaron model. And then you jump into the global model when you go beyond three days. Is that all right? Sounds great, thank you. Great, another question now, Evelyn. Um, we all associate red with danger. I'm just wondering, do the red crosses on the map represent thunderstorms or lightning strikes? That's a brilliant question. They're, it, it, they represent electricity in the air. It's not the actual strike, but I mean, I guess most, most lightning hits the ground. It doesn't always, but th that person is right. That's what I've seen about the radar. We have the red crosses, but the actual color is coded into how many are, are I want like strike to me that you actually strike the ground, but you can get 
you know, lightning through the air as well. So the, 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 the question is, um, um, is it hitting the ground? We can't, we can't judge if it's hitting the ground because the radar is going through the cloud, but more than likely it is. But certainly it's high danger. Get, a, get, the, get the hell out of Dodge, as they say. <laughs> and don't shelter underneath a tree. A tree. I can smile. Midlands THS <laughs> leash. Um, you can get into your car. It's called a Faraday cage, but don't touch anything. Great stuff. I have one last question for you here, Evelyn. Um, and it's just to be more user friendly, could the air pressure be added to the lake yeah. scenario, do you think? Yeah. It's on the way. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting in air pressure now um, because and we actually don't have gusts forecast either, which is crazy. It's, it's just we're adding that in. But but actually, can, can I just say uh, the, the Metern website is actually very good. OK. Um, you know, I, I'm not being I'm not boasting like it, it is good and we're trying to obviously constantly improve it. But where we are falling down is that when you go and get the website on your phone, it's a, not a good experience. There's too much space in it. Uh, you're, you're nodding there, Aideen. And it's no, it's true. And so we're working on it. And unfortunately, it won't be ready for this summer. But we're adding in, doing a few little improvements then at the same time. We're adding in air pressure. We're adding in gust. We're adding in a feels like temperature. Because on a day like, Say you our friend in uh, where in Donegal is it? Not Bun Ardara, wasn't it? Ardara. Yeah. Um like the, the air temperature on the Stevens screen might read eight degrees, but if there's a northerly wind of thirty knots, that'll skin the bone off whatever. So that'd be more like if the air temperature is eight degrees, we were going to add in a feels like temperature. So that'd be more like maybe four degrees in that wind. We're not going to call it wind chill because we want to have it for summer. Because, you know, in summer, like it can be feel cold in a wind too, but it can also feel warm. It can feel warmer than it is if it's a very warm, humid air mass. Um, you know, going back to my, you know, the frontal boundary between tropical air and cold polar air. Remember I showed that? That's um, in tropical air, uh, that's my favourite weather when it's humid because it, it doesn't get cold in the evening because normally it's cold. Can I just show the website or, or are you stuck for time? If, no, no, that's fine, yeah. If anyone wants to leave, do. <laughs> I just want to, if I, oh God, to sharing screen again. Uh, where's the website? Oh, here we are, thank God. Uh, share. So I just want to go on to the radar now because there's a great question there. So this is the weather radar. Um, so a radar. OK, so this is our current website. So it's. Stranford, how did that happen? Oh, um, so these little uh, colors here, as you know, are showers. OK, so they're the cumulonimbus. Now, um, uh, you can actually zoom in, look. You can zoom in on all of these charts. So say you're, you're out here, you've driven out here. I can I see a lake here? Whatever. You can see these big fellas. So the color here, uh, you see the color? So the colors go up in intensity. Look, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are, but the red here, uh, referring to what somebody said earlier as well, that's really intense rain. Now, I don't see any crosses on it here at the moment, but um, uh, you, if you press play, so th these are the actual showers that have fallen five minutes ago, more or less, and this is how they're moving. So it's not a forecast, it's actually what's happening, if you know what I mean. Okay, so let's let's move it down now. So we're going through time, look, 1240. So you can see the four, the showers are moving north to south because we have a northerly wind. Normally they move west to east. So this gives you a rate. Suppose, look, you know here now in Mayo, look, all the showers are gone, look. They're all gone. They're all, they're all passing down through Galway and Clare. Look where the big ones are. So it's actually quite clear here. Okay, there, there's more can come down. 
um, but you can actually follow them. You can actually use this to help your locally eyes forecast for a few hours there. I think that'll do now. I want to show you one more uh, radar latest reports. This is actually quite handy as well. So this this looks back in 12 hours or you can look back the last 48 hours if you like. It's just kind of interesting. So is that all right? Oh yeah, and here's our new marine warning seeing as we're on the live. So today, so this is a small craft warning. So this is for sea areas. But as I said, keep an eye on these and I would sign up for them because it is an indication maybe of what could be gusting over land as well. So that's today, Wednesday. is uh, for most series and then Thursday, there's no warnings outlook. Okay, so that's a new thing. That's great. I have one last question there, Evelyn, just yeah. in here. Um, and it's similar to the one I asked before, it's just wondering about weather apps, like 10 or 12 day forecasts, can they predict the weather so far in advance at any accurate level? And I suppose it's just, if you're planning a fishing trip, and you might want to think about what you're going to bring with you in your week's holidays. Can you actually do it in France or are you really relying on the, the three day weather from? from no, no, today? sorry. No, it's the three days are warnings. OK, so um, these are for Ireland. But if you want to go into so pick a spot. Pick somewhere. Where do you want to go? I want to go to Mayo. Um, we'll say Kong, will we? Perfect. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's here. We've most we've thousands of places here. So there's Kong. Well, here's this is it. We do have it too. So we have it going up. That's what I've shown you. Look. So that's to Monday the third. So it's on the Metairn site and it's on our the Metairn app as well. So Very it tough. gives you a very good idea, but we only issue warnings for the first three days because the weather, the predictability diverges, you know, chaos theory beyond a day or two. So we don't want to be giving you like false warnings. You're the boy who cried wolf. When we issue a warning, we want to be reasonably certain. I mean, it can still be wrong in detail, but we want to be reasonably certain that it'll happen. So we, that's why we're not giving warnings beyond three days. But certainly, Use the MetAaron app, and th this looks quite good on uh, on the app uh, too. You get the seven day forecast on the app, and just to finish out, on we actually are showing the charts for ten days ahead. So that's that's good to have a look too. So this is the ECMW. I remember I was telling you the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, and indeed, if you want to go anywhere uh, over Europe as well, but. Um, this gives the forecast for 10 days ahead. Oh yeah, actually I will show you this, these wind barbs. This is excellent actually, we've just put this in. So this is for 10 days ahead too. So this is, gives you a very good overview, especially because you guys would be very interested in the winds obviously, but this gives a very good overview of the t of storms maybe moving in, um, you know, to give a good overview. So um, that's for 10 days ahead. And we have it done in the warning colours. It's not that we've issued the warnings, but it, it can be very good to see in the hurricane season. You can see them spinning over here and then coming back over the Atlantic. And you can see 10 days ahead and then eight days, seven days ahead and how the forecast varies from day to day, the longer range forecast. It's why, you know, we've a lot of people now on social media who are doing their own amateur forecasting. And so they're obviously, I mean, we have obviously an open data policy and most MET services have. So all this data is free to use. So you're looking and says, oh, say, oh my God, there's a storm heading for around in, in 10 days. And then the social media will say, batten down the hatches in 10 days. But MET Aaron don't issue those warnings because, uh, by day seven, that storm could be heading up for Iceland. You know, it's not certain, there's too much divergence, as I said, due to chaos theory and the modeling. Is it okay? Hi, Evelyn, uh, that's great. It's brilliant to see all the updates on that site. Uh, just one last question that's come in here. Are the forecasts for lakes in Northern Ireland the same resolution as those lakes in the Republic? For lakes yeah. in the Republic? It is. It do, yeah, I think I think we have lakes in Northern Ireland here as well. As I said, if we're no, of course, because we have the model for the whole of Ireland. Yeah. So do we want to try and pick a lake in Northern Ireland? 
I hope I have anyway. Um, I just can't. Lachne, I guess. Now, Lachne is very big, so I don't know at what point it's on. So we could probably do it a few points there. It's kind of more towards the north. I might get two points in it. So, as I said, send me on any lakes you want included and we'll throw it in for you. So it's the very same, we have it, because our model, the Metairn model covers all of Ireland. Here's a, a, a kind of easier wind look. Jeez, it's very hard to see that. But to me, that's kind of meaningless. We have the wind arrow, the bigger it is, the bigger the wind. But look, I want you guys to get used to the wind barbs. This is much better. It's more professional. Where am I gone? Oh yeah, here we are, Ireland wind barbs. And if you learn how to read them, so there's the one line here is 10 knots um, and half a half a line is five knots. So it builds up. It's just, oh yeah. So here's a four six. You see, I know the colours aren't that great, but that's meant to be a four six. Look. Uh, so you see that colouring there. So two, see two lines. Can you see this? Am I I'll zoom in a bit? That's better. <laughs> Sorry, that's much better. Um and then as, as we go forward in time, the re you can see the resolution. So there's that measure and high resolution model look. You have the wind barbs very close together. And then as you get bigger, you see how it spreads out. That's a good example of that. And this is, so this, that's five knot wind. So that's very light. The winds get very light in the outlook. Isn't that good? And there's a 10 knot, which is a force three. And we'll see if we have any more. The wind is so light. Oh, there's 15 knots, like one line and two. So listen, just get used to this and get you get used to it at home on your, your laptops or whatever. Unfortunately, it's not, it doesn't, it still comes out on the phone. It's not as good as an experience, and we will be improving it, but it'll probably take three months. It'll probably be August or September before you get the best experience. But really, there is a huge amount here. Oh, yeah, we're also islands if you're interested. And then we have the link there to Water Safety Ireland and, and Govern Safety. So we're doing all the islands. Let's pick an island. Ackle Sound. We have a few. Ackle is so big. It's not really an island. but. And the, the good thing is you can play around with these and they're, they're all gone up seven days. Oh, it doesn't look that good. Look for the bank holiday. We won't be going there anywhere, will we? <laughs> and you can see where it is. Okay. So I hope that helps you. And then we have our associate that the human forecaster writes the actual forecast, which is like a verbal interpretation of this. Now remember, oh look, we've ensembles which are a whole different kettle of fish. I won't go into that now. You lose the will to live. Fantastic, um, Evelyn. That's fantastic. Yeah. Actually, can I just, before you shut me up now after this, and I just see here at the end of the website, you see the podcast, have, are you aware of our podcast? No. So yeah, that was worth waiting for now, okay? So please go on and go to the Meta and Podcast, and while you're out there fishing now, you can be listening to the Meta and Podcast on your, your lovely boat. So I just want to say... Uh, thanks for listening to me and email me. I put up a slide there, but I forgot to save it. Email me if, if you want any extra services or anything at forecasts at met.ie.